Hello and welcome to Discover Series 2, the second in this series of online education sessions from Salts Healthcare, where we plan to explore differing areas within the specialist sphere of paediatric stoma care. Delving into this area of our stoma care speciality will hopefully enable many of us to enhance our knowledge and perhaps discover something new and beneficial that we can then use in our own clinical practices. In this first session, Emily Hooker, a colorectal nurse specialist based at Birmingham's Children's Hospital, offers us an insight into the world of caring for a neonate. Emily has a keen interest in neonatal care, having worked in this area for five years before joining the colorectal team at Birmingham Children's Hospital over 12 months ago. She has completed both a paediatric and neonatal course from Birmingham City University and is an active member of the PSNG, Paediatric Stoma Care Nurse Group. Today I'm going to talk to you about care of the neonate with a stoma. The learning outcomes for this talk is to find the meaning of neonate, why a neonate might have a stoma, considerations in neonatal care, and linking these considerations to stoma care, discharge planning, and community care for neonates. Why a neonate might have a stoma. There's a long list of reasons why a neonate may have a stoma. These could include NEC, which is necrotizing enterocolitis, intestinal atresia, anorectal malformations, meconium ileus, Hirschsprung's disease, or spontaneous ileal perforation. The meaning of neonate. Neonate plainly means newborn. It also incorporates the first 28 days of the baby's life. This term can be broke down further with the term preterm neonate. A premature baby is a baby born at less than 37 weeks gestation. Moderate to late preterm is a baby born at 32 to 37 weeks gestation. Very preterm is 28 to 32 weeks gestation. Extreme preterm is a baby born at or before 28 weeks gestation. Considerations in neonatal care. These include prematurity, thermoregulation, environment, neonatal nutrition and feeding, pain, family-centered care, developmental care, and neonatal skin. Prematurity. Again, this is referring to babies born less than 37 weeks gestation. These babies are very fragile, delicate, and they cannot be classed as just small adults. They're extremely susceptible to infections and one little change will have a massive impact on how this baby reacts. They have very little ability to cope with stress and they are likely to have a multitude of problems. Considering this with stoma care, we must have good hand hygiene at all times to reduce the risk of infection. It does not have to be a sterile procedure unless the baby has a very severe surgical wound which needs to be treated sterile. The stoma itself does not need to be cared for sterile. Take things slow, take your time. Don't make this baby jump, you will cause it stress. And consider all their other conditions whilst looking after the baby, not just their stoma. Thermoregulation. Neonates are very prone to heat loss through the following ways. Evaporation, conduction, radiation and convection. These babies have a very large surface area and this is what leads them to have so much heat loss. Little preterm neonates are unable to shiver to keep themselves warm. They can experience hypothermia which is when their body temperature goes to less than 36 degrees and this can increase the risk of feed intolerances and this may lead to NEC. When a baby is 24 to 28 weeks gestation, this is only when the subcutaneous fat layers are formed. These are what keep us warm. 
considering thermoregulation with stoma care. You must warm appliances and equipment that you're going to use. Use body temperature, warm water. Minimise the time that the skin is wet. This may be from the water you're cleaning with or the stoma effluent. Remove only the necessary clothing required. The environment. Exclude all drafts because this will lead to the baby's heat loss. Close doors, windows and reduce activity around the baby. Dim the lighting to reduce the stress and reduce the noises. Turn up the heated cot or incubator. Considerations to be made with stoma care with regards to environment include optimising the room temperature, warming the water, swaddle the baby to help them to settle, minimise the time that the neonate is exposed, only remove that necessary clothing and remember the hats are always important to keep the heads warm as this is where they lose a lot of their heat. Prepare all your equipment so you're not going to and from different locations and this will help to reduce the stresses on the neonate. Neonatal feeding and nutrition. A neonate may be fed in a multitude of different ways. These include parental nutrition, breast milk, specialist formulas, but also these neonates may be nil by mouth. Another thing to consider with regards to stoma care is these babies may suffer from reflux. When on reduced feeds or TPN, the stoma output will be significantly less. Breast milk can cause stoma output to be looser. Specialist formulas such as Pepti Junior can make the skin very greasy and we need to consider what appliances will be best for this baby. If a baby suffers from re reflux, they may be on Carabel or Gaviscon and this can significantly thicken the output from the stoma. Poor nutrition always equals poor ability to heal. We must consider this if the baby is suffering from sore skin. It is always worth emptying the stoma bag before feeding the baby to reduce risk of leak. Pain. The nervous system starts to develop at around 22 weeks gestation. This means that the baby will have an impaired judgment of pain. They will not feel it the same as you and I. The slightest bit of pain may seem extreme. Pain can be managed in a pharmacological or non-pharmacological way. With regards to stoma care, we need to be aware of the gestation of the baby. Then we will know how they will react to a little or a lot of pain. Minimise pain where possible using the appropriate adhesive removers to minimise the discomfort to the neonate. Cluster care where possible, do things around the same time as observations or washes or changing of the bed. But remember, don't overwhelm the neonate. Don't do too much at once. To manage their pain, you could use a swaddle or sucrose. You should not need to give analgesia for a stoma bag change. Family-centered care. It is important that an infant and family-centered approach is used when caring for neonates, as this will always lead to a better outcome. Promote parents to be involved wherever possible. With regards to stoma care, start training early. Provide written and visual guidance as it is a lot for the parents to take in at this time. A lot is going on, they've got a lot of information. When parents are happy and feeling confident, let them lead the care, let them have that independence as this will help them when they go home. Developmental care. Part of developmental care incorporates managing their pain and minimising the stress caused to the neonate as this will be key in their development in the future. Promote that parent-infant relationship to enhance the bond. With regards to stoma care, we can do this by considering all other procedures that are going on around the neonate. Consider the environment. Take your time. Position the baby correctly. 
Remember, boundaries are sometimes necessary depending on the gestation, and we need to put the babies back in these positions after completing our stoma bag change or empty, and involve the family wherever possible. Neonatal skin. The skin is the largest organ in the body. This provides a physical barrier, prevents fluid loss, and helps with thermoregulation. The epidermal layer of the skin is virtually zero at 24 weeks gestation. Two to three layers have developed by 30 weeks gestation, and at full term they have between 10 to 20 layers. This is the reason why we need to be extremely careful with this skin. Premature skin is very fragile. Thinking about neonatal skin with regards to stoma care, in our nursing care we want to prevent the fluid loss from the skin and therefore we may want to increase the humidity of the incubators to maintain this for the neonate. Limit the damage using appropriate adhesive removers. Reduce the risk of infection by always washing our hands appropriately. Document any changes that you see on the ne neonate. Sore skin is not always avoidable. The use of care plans can help us to document where we see the sore skin and how it is healing or what you have used to help heal the skin. In the future, it's good to prepare parents that when they are babies a little bit older, they may start teething and that will bring along with it sore skin. This sore skin will be around their stoma as opposed to the nappy rash they may have had if they didn't have a stoma. Discharge planning for the neonates. Make sure training for parents and carers is complete. Make sure they have sufficient discharge equipment to take home with them. They need to be registered with a GP, which is not always at the forefront of parents' mind when they're taking their baby home for the first time. These babies will require a colorectal nurse specialist or similar to follow them up in the community. They also must be known to a surgical consultant. Community care for neonates. Preterm neonates will be under a neonatologist to take care of all their follow-up with regards to their development and complex conditions. Health visitors will be involved to monitor the weight and help with feeding these babies and providing an extra support in the community. These babies often are very complex and they can be under a community nurse or neonatal outreach nurse to help with their needs. Lastly, a few useful links and some points of reading. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, for highlighting some of the specific challenges that sometimes arise when caring for a neonate with a stoma and for demonstrating innovative ways that we can employ within our practice to overcome such issues. Maya Angelou, an American poet, said, you will face many defeats in life, but never let yourself be defeated. And I think, as stoma care nurses, we always have a plan A, plan B, or even plan C when it comes to managing those challenging situations that we all face from time to time, so we're not defeated. Thank you for watching this session. I do hope you've enjoyed it and it has offered you some valuable insights into the care and management of a neonate with a stoma. This episode is able to be viewed on demand at Salt's Healthcare website, so it can be stopped and replayed at your convenience, giving you time to write notes or reflect on certain aspects of the session if required. If anyone has any follow-up questions, then please do email us at discover at salts.co.uk and also use the same email address to complete the evaluation form to receive your certificate of attendance. The next session in the Discover series is being launched on Thursday, April the 29th. Within this session, Gail Fitzpatrick explores the challenge of citing a baby or a child for a stoma. Thank you again for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time. Music